Hello everyone, happy Monday. Today I'm going to be talking about paper clutter, one of the biggest obstacles when it comes to tackling your home and getting everything organized and streamlined. Um, so I thought I would tackle three different things. First of all, like how to stop it coming into your home. Um, second, what to do with the stuff that does come into your home, like how to tackle what's left. And then third, how to store, how to properly store um, what you do decide to keep. So let's start with how to stop it coming in. I think paper clutter is a lot like laundry. <laughs> it is just this never ending stream of stuff and it doesn't matter how much you deal with what you already have. The fact of the matter is there's more coming. <laughs> So usually when it comes to decluttering, I always say to people, you know, you have this finite amount of stuff in your home and that can be heartening and give you hope because you think, OK, um, particularly with things like clothes that you wouldn't necessarily be, you know, getting on a very regular basis, like on a weekly or a daily basis or anything like that. But paper is different, like I said, like laundry, just a steady stream. So the first thing you want to do, and I say this for every single category, I say this all the time, but that is to stem the flow. That is to stop any more of it coming in. You probably already have a pile in your home that you are ready to tackle, but it feels overwhelming. And the last thing you want to do is just see that added to you don't want to deal with a pile of papers you know like basically one step forward and then two steps back because there's just more and more stuff being added to the pile hello everyone thank you for joining <laughs> um talking about paper clutter for anyone who's just popped in so stemming the flow that first comes from getting yourself off junk mail lists that is a big problem here in the us that i have noticed not nearly as much of a problem in ireland but there are, it depends on where you live. So I can't give you very specific advice um, in relation to how you can do that in your particular area or country, but I would suggest going to your post office or doing a Google search. Um, in Ireland, Comreg look after it. Over here, I think it's probably the FTC. Um, but go to your local post office or contact them, obviously, nowadays, <laughs> um, or look up online and just find out what way you can get off mailing lists. Sometimes you can just contact the company directly. Um, in Ireland, what I used to do is just put return to sender on it with a little note saying, please remove me from your mailing list. And I would just pop it back in the post for them and it would be automatically returned by the post office. I don't know if that works here in the US, but that is something that I did um, to great effect. Another thing then is getting yourself off mailing lists in terms of things that you may have signed up for. So you signed up for a magazine subscription, a newspaper subscription, um, a catalog, all those types of things. Get yourself off those lists. Again, usually it's just a matter of contacting the company and saying that you want to cancel your subscription or contacting whatever catalog company and asking to be removed from their list. Um, and that should be reasonably easy to do I know obviously it's a lot more awkward like you can't just press a button but there are also um services online like I said if you google you can generally find out how to do it there are services I'm not going to recommend any because I haven't tried any personally so um if you have tried one personally that has worked for you and that you find great um feel free to drop it in the little chat box um, and let others know about it so I suppose with the pandemic, we're not probably receiving as many papers as we, as we normally would. You know, schools are closed. We're not out and about, so we're not getting like flyers and things like that. But there's still a lot of stuff coming in. So just monitor the stuff that is coming in and try and stop it. Cut it off at the source. Stop it being sent to you. You can contact. Like, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody and say, I don't want this anymore. Like, stop sending this to me. Even my daughter's school, I reached out to her teacher and asked her not to send home as because they were sending home, you know, like paper newsletters and things. Um, and I just asked her to stop doing that. And she was perfectly happy to do it because she also sent an email version. <laughs> so things like that. Don't be afraid to just ask someone, like, is there some way that we can reduce the amount of stuff that's coming into our home? Um, and that's an, it's a pretty easy fix. The next one then is to basically have a recycling box or a bin or whatever 
somewhere inside wherever you enter your home so that if you are carrying post in or you know flyers or something as soon as you come home basically if you come home with papers whether that be receipts or flyers or junk mail you automatically have some place that it can go to be gone <laughs> because the tendency with a lot of people is to come home and you have a bunch of stuff and you just drop it on your kitchen counter or somewhere and it just piles up like dishes, like laundry. <laughs> but if you deal with it straight away, paper in particular is a very easy one to deal with straight away because so much of it is just junk, 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 recycle, recycle, recycle. So if you can get yourself some form of container or bin or recycling box and put it immediately inside wherever you enter your home and like go through the stuff, like don't even let it, like here is your threshold, here is your bin or your box. It does not pass. Like it goes just over the threshold and it does not go into your home. Um, thank you so much for all the comments and the questions. I will get to them like last week. Um, I'll just kind of go through all my tips first and then I will come back and answer all of your questions. So if you've got questions or comments related to paper clutter, any tips you've got of your own, um, please absolutely feel free or any other questions, but I'll probably mainly deal with the paper clutter ones. Um, so that's it. It's about stopping it from being sent to your home. And then if it does get sent to your home, it's about stopping it from actually entering your home. So those are kind of two quick fixes so that the stuff, the paper clutter that is in your home is not constantly being added to. So then after that, okay, the stuff has come in. This is a tip that I've kind of alluded to in the past, but I've never actually specifically expressly said it. So you're gonna be hearing this kind of for the first time, but that is, and this is a strange one, you may never have heard this before, but it's something that I came across and that is to define paper. I know that sounds silly, ridiculous or whatever, bear with me. What I mean by that is when I was going through my papers years ago now, I got bogged down in what I considered part of the paper category. So I was doing the Conmary method and some things were very obvious paper clutter, like junk mail, um, letters and statements and things like that. But then I had other things like stationery. So I had, you know, kind of craft papers. I had, you know, letters that were more like memorabilia, sentimental type stuff, um, you know, stories and poems that I'd written, college notes, things like that. So really defining for yourself what you will be including in the paper category. Like, will you be including um, magazines and newspapers? Or would you rather leave those and do them with books? Will you be including photographs? Because technically they are paper, like a paper product, but also kind of technically could be more sentimental. Um, so defining for yourself before you sit down and before you tackle it, before you gather all your stuff together, what are you including in the paper category and what are you not including for this go around, just for this particular um, decluttering spree? That That is something that I should have done. And that is something that kind of was a stumbling block for me when I was doing papers because I sat down to do them. And then I was like, oh, is this really paper? Technically, it's kind of more stationary, like crafting thing. So define for yourself before you sit down what you are including in that. So you're going around your home, you're gathering up all of your papers, whatever you have specifically decided <laughs> is papers. Now you can do this one of two ways and whichever way you do it, perfectly fine. Um, we each have different ways of doing things. It's just to go around your home, um, kind of area by area. Personally, I like gathering them all together, but if you have papers, if you have not tackled them in a long time or perhaps even ever, and it is just incredibly overwhelming for you. And you think that just gathering them all, that alone is too big a task for you to take on. Then just go through them in situ, wherever they already are. Don't feel that you need to gather them all into one pile. You could do it once you have whittled it down to kind of a more manageable size, but pick whichever one you feel is going to work best for you. If you think it's pretty manageable and you kind of have a fair idea of where all your papers are, then yes, it is very helpful to see them all in one pile and just go through them. Um, but if it's very overwhelming for you and you don't think that that's going to work, then absolutely just go through them in situ, wherever they are. The next then, okay, these are the two biggest <laughs> lessons that I learned 
when I went through a paper clutter. So learn from my bitter, bitter experience. And they will kind of sound obvious to you, but trust me on this, okay? The first one, get yourself comfortable. I cannot tell you how much agony I was in when I gathered all of my papers. Foolishly, the first time I did it, like they were all on the floor. And then I sat on the floor and went through all of them. I was in so much pain by the end of it. Don't do that. Really get yourself comfortable. Um, sit as upright as you can. Don't like lean over because the tendency is to pile them either on the floor or on, you know, like a desk or something. And then you're just constantly, and then you're, you know, standing over them or something. Get yourself as comfortable as you can. Realize you are going to be there for a long time. Like paper is... You don't necessarily have to sit down and do it all in one go. Obviously, you don't have to spend hours doing it all in one go. But the reality is, for most of us, we have a lot of paper clutter. We have accumulated a lot of paper clutter over the years. And it is going to take a while <laughs> to go through it all. So if you think in your head, like, you're in this for the long haul, straight up front, you're honest with yourself, this is going to take time. You can do it in short bursts of time. That's totally fine. But if you go in with that mentality... Um, and then if it doesn't take as long, hooray, bonus, <laughs> you can go get yourself a drink. <laughs> um, but if you go in with the right mindset first and just think, okay, this is probably going to take time. And then there are no like nasty surprises down the line when like hours later, you're still sitting there and it doesn't seem like much progress has been made. So mentally prepare yourself, but yes, physically also in terms of getting really comfortable, having a snack, having a drink. Those two things are very important. <laughs> and before you sit down, like go to the bathroom, get yourself situated, have a little blanket or a throw beside you so that if you get cold or whatever, <laughs> you can just keep going. Once you get in a groove with paper clutter, you will not want to stop. You will want to keep going for as long as you have the energy to do it. You don't want to have to stop. Now, obviously, if you need a break, if you need a bathroom break, take them. I'm not saying like, you know, power through and just make yourself miserable or put yourself at risk or whatever. Um, but once you sit down, it's really frustrating if you're kind of in the flow with something and, you know, something interrupts you. So put your phone on silent. Get yourself, look, set yourself up for success, but really getting comfortable, like sitting there knowing that you're possibly going to be there for a while. So you're going to get yourself as comfortable as possible so that when you walk away, you are not bent double. Okay. Like I said, learned that one the hard way. Second thing I learned the hard way. Remember when I said about defining what your paper stuff is? Exclude right now, <laughs> any form of memorabilia, mementos, sentimental stuff, get rid of it. Like if you come across, if you're going through a pile and you come across a letter that is from an ex-boyfriend, from a classmate, you know, back when you were in school, cards that you received from your kids, whatever it is, set those aside now. The amount of time that I spent reading through old notes and letters and cards it just made the process 10 times longer than it needed to be so immediately if you come across it like just set it aside don't look at it don't open it if you know that it's something that is sentimental something that you will potentially get sucked into get rid of it for now <laughs> okay so leading on from that then, those are my two big ones, getting comfortable and not including any sort of sentimental stuff in it. So leading on from that then, the next one is to make fast decisions. When you are going through papers, because there is generally a lot of information on them, there's a lot of kind of scanning involved. Um, you know, with receipts, you might want to look through to see, okay, what is this receipt for? Do I need to keep this receipt? What date is this receipt? You know, when did I get it? You know, if it's a warranty or if there's anything included on it. Um, it can take a long time. So make decisions as quickly as you can. If you think that something is going to take more than a few seconds to just scan through and get a good sense of what it is, set it aside. 
I'm just put it aside right now. Have yourself a little like pending pile, essentially, where you will come back to that stuff right now. And I say this for all categories of decluttering. Make fast decisions. If something is slowing you down, set it aside. Come back to it. Momentum is the name of the game here. You want to get yourself into a good groove and just keep yourself moving. So if you can't make a decision within a few seconds of just glancing at something, set it aside, come back to it. Um, that, that Trust me, <laughs> trust me on that one. Really, really important. Um, let me see, what else do I have? Oh yes, so in terms of how you're going to tackle the papers, like I said, it is probably going to take a long time. What I would recommend, there are several different ways of doing it. So I'll kind of name some things and you can decide whether or not they would work for you. We're all different. Different things will work for us. Some of us want to sit down, just power through and just get it all done in one go. Other of us prefer the kind of slow and steady approach. Whatever works for you makes no odds to me. But this is something that I would say, whether you are either like whether you were sit down and get it all done in one go person or whether you were tackle like a few minutes a night, I would say pick like a chunk of papers, maybe like a centimeter thick or 10 papers or whatever, and just deal with those. Now, if you want to power through and keep going, then you can go like 10 pieces of paper at a time or whatever. But what that's going to do for you, because paper is such a huge category, generally, you will get a sense of accomplishment and a sense of achievement and you will get those small little wins. Paper, because it's so tiny, we have a tendency to think it's, it's not going to take up any space. I'll just keep this piece of paper because it's like this big. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep it. But then over time, it's this big. So have yourself like a stack of, we'll say 10 pieces of paper or 20 pieces of paper. And those are what you're going to go through because a paper mountain, because the pages are so tiny, when you go through, you might spend like an hour going through it and it, like the pile looks the exact same size. Whereas if you divide it all out and you don't have to like spend time dividing it all out or anything up front, but just take off your 10 pieces of paper, like turn away from the big pile and you're like, these are my 10 pieces of paper. And then you deal with those 10 pieces and that's it. You get a sense of achievement and accomplishment. And again, it's about that momentum. It's about giving yourself those quick wins. Keep moving. If you're one of the type of people who like just needs to do it in chunks, then by all means, go like do whatever you want to do and come back the next day and do another 10, 20, 30, whatever pieces of paper. Um, but that is what I would recommend, no matter what type of person you are, giving yourself those quick wins. Like, OK, I'm going to tackle this pile right now. That's what I'm going to do. Go through those. You've got your win. If you want to keep going and pick up another pile, by all means. If you feel, no, I'm done with this pile, I'll come back to it tomorrow or whatever, that's totally fine too. But the quick wins is really important. Like I said, particularly with paper because it is so difficult to actually see physical, visible progress when everything is this small. So that's a big one. Um, taking those tiny chunks of paper or if, if you don't want to like count out pieces of paper, then just say for five minutes, I'm going to go through papers. Set a timer for five minutes, go through as many as you can in those five minutes. And then when your five minutes is up, you think, great, I have done five, I'm five minutes closer to the finish line with all of this. Um, the next thing then comes from, these are kind of some quick wins as well. So speaking of the quick wins, a really quick win for me was to reduce bulk. And by that, I mean, there are probably things that you have. For example, one of the things that I had was notebooks. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know that I am a notebook fiend. I love notebooks um, and the stationery in general, planners, all that sort of stuff. But I had notebooks where I was keeping the notebook because I was like, okay, well, I've only used 10 pages out of this notebook, still a good notebook, we'll still use it eventually. But I was keeping those 10 pages that I didn't need. When I went back through it the second time, I started ripping out pages that I didn't need. That probably does not sound like it will make that much of a difference. But trust me, if you have as many notebooks as I do, it will make a big difference. All of a sudden, your pile, just by removing um, those excess pages, your pile will go from like this to this. 
it's a really quick way to reduce bulk. So don't assume, same is true for magazines. If you are keeping magazines or newspapers, you know, just for one or two articles, all of a sudden your stack of newspapers, once you rip out the articles that you're actually interested in, goes from this to this. So really think about what you actually need on that piece of paper. Do you need to keep the entire piece of paper or do you only need to keep one tiny little bit of it? That's a great way to reduce bulk really quickly. Um, the same then is true for user manuals. I would generally recommend just getting rid of user manuals completely. All of the information is available online. You will find a digital version online more than likely, unless it's like a really, really old product. So see if you can track down the online um, user manual. In reality, I think most of us, when something breaks, the first thing we do is Google it or we call the company. There are very few of us that will actually sit down and read through the user manual. So consider getting rid of them. But if you don't want to get rid of them, perfectly fine. It's entirely up to you. Do consider ripping out all of the pages that are in a language that you do not understand. Generally, when we get user manuals, they are in multiple different languages. So you might have a 100 page manual and the first 10 pages are in a language that you actually speak and read. And the rest is just like, this is the size of your user manual. This is the size of the bit that you actually understand. And the rest of it is just nonsense that you will never, like you can happily get rid of that. Um, so reduce the bulk down. The same then is true. And this, you listen, your shredder will thank me for this one. <laughs> When you are setting aside things to be shredded, again, generally there is only a small piece of information on a piece of paper that actually contains what you want to shred. It's usually just your address or it's an account number or a phone number or whatever, a name, a detail. Just rip off that tiny little bit and just put that bit into the shredder. Shredding papers took me longer than actually going through all of the papers. The actual shredding, like putting in the pages, waiting for them to go through, putting in another stack, then inevitably the shredder would overheat and I'd have to sit there and wait until it cooled down and then I could go again. Ripping off the tiny, tiny little bit that actually requires shredding and recycling the rest. Um, also, when you're going through papers, a good way to reduce bulk, like I said, if you've only got like one little piece of information on a big giant stack of papers, just snap a picture. Just snap a picture and that's it. When I'm going through a magazine, if there's something that I want to refer to again, just snap a picture. Stick it in a folder on my phone that says, you know, like magazine articles or reference or whatever you like. Um, and you don't need to keep the actual physical copy. If you want to scan papers rather than keeping the physical copy, by all means do. Scanning does not spark joy for me. It sparks more joy <laughs> for me to keep the actual physical paper than it does to scan in all of that stuff. I would rather just keep the physical copy, but it's entirely up to you if you've got a good scanner, if you don't mind doing it, um, by all means scan the paperwork. That's another great way to reduce bulk really quickly. Marie Kondo's general advice in relation to paper, and I think it's good advice, is to assume that everything is to be got rid of. Um, she doesn't talk about like sparking joy or anything when it comes to papers, because realistically, <laughs> that's, this is probably not gonna happen. So assume that every piece of paper you pick up is going into the recycling or going into the shredder or wherever, and then you will need a very good reason to keep it like unless there is a compelling reason to keep a piece of paper like you need it for legal reasons you know tax records birth certificates or whatever just go in with the mentality that it's going like it is going unless it can like defend itself and put up a very good case for why it should stay and that one little kind of mental shift will really make a big difference when it comes to paper um so finally then when it comes to You've decided, you know, you've gone through all your categories, you've come to the end. Um, it can be helpful sometimes to do one quick pass and just get rid of all the junk first. Like if you just go through them really quickly, get rid of anything that you know that you definitely do not need. And again, that's coming from my earlier tip of like moving fast. 
Um, just keep moving. If you want to do a quick pass first, just get rid of all the stuff that you know is junk and then go back over things. Um, that is not the way that I do it. But if I were facing a big giant pile of papers and I wanted to see progress <laughs> quickly, that is the way that I would do it. If I just needed to like get rid of things really quickly, I would go through them one by one, take out all the stuff that I know was junk. Um, so yes, when it comes to then categorizing what is left, I would say stick to very loose categories. If you were like me, you have a tendency to like make things 10 times more complicated than they need to be. <laughs> Just, um, stick to very loose categories. So I put things like health, anything related to health at all, just went in one pile. I had anything that was related to like ID or certs or anything like that. So I keep like birth certificates, marriage certificates, all of our green card related stuff, um, passports, any form of like ID type thing I keep. Anything that I might be required to produce to prove my identity or to prove that I'm married or to prove the scout is my child because we don't share a surname. <laughs> this happens to me all the time when I'm traveling with her. I keep those all in one folder. So think very broadly in terms of your categories. If afterwards you want to go back and refine them, totally fine. But in the beginning, do not get bogged down in trying to find the perfect categories and to have everything perfectly categorized. It's not going to help you. Again, it's going to really slow you down. Stick to really, really broad categories. This one is for property. You know, it's anything related to your home or your car or anything like that. This one is for, I have a reference folder. Anything, any piece of paper that I kind of want to keep um, to reference or if it's an idea that I want to like flesh out someday or whatever, I put it in there. Um, by all means, have a miscellaneous category. If you don't have, like, I mean, if you've got filing cabinets and filing cabinets of papers, you're probably going to need um, like smaller categories. But I think for most of us, once we whittle down our papers, they generally we generally don't have that many. Um, and like I said, mementos and kids' artwork and stuff, completely different story. We'll come back to that a different day. But generally sticking to broad categories for normal home use is totally fine. And like I said, miscellaneous category, by all means, knock yourself out. Um, thank you, Ellie. Thank you so much for that super chat. I really appreciate that. Um, yay. <laughs> so, yeah. And the final thing that I will say on Paper Clutter before I get to all of your questions and comments and things, Kathleen says tax returns do not spark joy. This is exactly why I pay an accountant. I am one of those people where I feel that there are certain jobs where I'm just happy to pay the money because my time and my emotional well-being is just worth that to me. Um, obviously, I know it's not in everyone's budget. Um, and I'm the kind of person, like I'm a very frugal person. I'm kind of of the mentality normally that you know, if I can do something myself, why would I waste the money paying someone else to do it? But if it is within your budget at all, get someone to do it. If you genuinely despise it, it's just not your strong suit. Um, yeah. So yeah, finally, like I said, before I get to your questions and comments and things, I would say, try and visualize the system that you want. Some of us are very visual people and we need to see our papers out because it's a case of like out of sight, out of mind, right? You need to see them somewhere or you will never deal with them. Like bills will not get paid because they're in a drawer. Other people, and I'm kind of, I lean more towards this side, is we like them all categorized and we like them put away somewhere where we can't see them. To me, papers are kind of visual clutter. Um, I have a standing reminder with myself, a weekly reminder to go through my paperwork. And that works for me. So it's not, it may be out of sight, but it's not out of mind for me because I know that every Sunday I get my reminder to go through my paperwork and action anything, anything I need to. So figure out what will work best for you. Each household is different. You're going to have different ways of dealing with things. It will depend on what type of paperwork you have. It will depend on how many people are in your household, whether they deal with their own paperwork or whether you kind of look after all of the paperwork for the household. What I do, I'm not necessarily recommending this. I'm just giving you an example of what works for me. I have a little drawer beside my desk 
Um, on the bottom is the filing cabinet. So that's where kind of long-term reference type things go. Any piece of paper that I get throughout the week, I put in this top drawer. It is like my paper inbox. And then, like I said, once a week on a Sunday, I go through that and I file whatever needs to be filed. I pay whatever bills need to be paid. Sometimes if I get something in and I know straight away I can file it, I will just file it immediately. Um, but other times the paperwork will go in there. So it's just one kind of in tray, if you like. Um, and again, it's in a drawer for me. But if you are a very visual person, have get one of those like stands, magazine stands, or just one of those trays or whatever, and keep it on your desk or somewhere where you will see it. Thank you so much for the super chat. Oh my goodness. <laughs> these, I love them. Sorry, and all of these hearts on Instagram, like these just totally <laughs> make my day. So visual, but visualize the system that you think will work best for you. And don't think you need to get it perfect because guess what? You can change things. <laughs> like if you try something and it doesn't work, like, it's all like it's it's easily fixable if you're not sure try something that you think will work for you live with it for a while notice what annoys you about it notice what's working for you with it um, and then just tweak as you go nothing is and listen I understand as a perfectionist I know that tendency to want to have everything perfect right out the gate like you want to set up the perfect filing system but I've mentioned this before it is not about progress over perfection if you're a perfectionist that phrase means nothing to you <laughs> um it is progress towards perfection like I know when I put a system in place it may not be perfect out the gate but it is more perfect than not having a system and I can get it to perfect by observing how it works like what's working what's not working and then tweaking as I go and I can get it closer to perfection rather than doing nothing because as a perfectionist that is our tendency we either want it perfect and if we don't think we can get it perfect because really what can you ever have perfect then we don't do it <laughs> we just don't um so progress towards perfection is something that has worked for me but are you a visual person who needs to see the stuff out on your desk or whatever in which case get yourself a tray or one of those like magazine things that you can put on the wall um or if you want it away put it away and just leave yourself a little recurring reminder on your phone in your task management software in your planner wherever um so that you can go back and deal with it now I am going to go back and go through all of your questions and comments Ellie asks how I'm doing today I'm doing great um GNST mom, the pandemic finally has my husband dealing with mail right away. Yeah, we've always tried to deal with it immediately once it comes into the house. Um, and that's where like having your box or your bin or your shredder or whatever right inside the door so that you can deal with it immediately. It does not come into your home. It does not infiltrate your home. Like paper is the enemy. <laughs> so trying to get it... Um, you know, under control before it actually gets into your home or before it gets into like the main part of your home. Um, Ellie, these days the mailboxes look so nice, no leaflets. Yeah, there's definitely been a reduction, but I think the flip side of that is once all the kids go back to school and once everything's back to normal, it's going to be an influx. That's why it's better to get a handle on it now, I feel, and get a good system in place, even if it's not the perfect system, but get some form of system in place, get into the habit of dealing with your mail immediately. Um, Bellerina, I started doing that recently. Leaflets or junk coming in gets binned straight away. It's the bits with addresses on it. I don't know if I should shred it first, so that tends to pile up. You have to shred it straight away. And don't even think about it. Just rip off the piece with your address, pop it in the shredder or wherever. Um, get rid of it immediately leaving it to pile up means that you will never deal with it or when you do come to deal with it it will just be this mammoth task um so yeah I would recommend if you're like if in doubt just cut it out <laughs> just shred it get rid of it I would say though don't with junk mail the tendency is just to dump it that's not going to stop it from continuing to come into your home so as soon as you notice something if you think it's just a one-off like every now and again we'll get a random leaflet from a local company do you want us to cut your grass do you want us to paint your house or something those I don't bother because they're not regular things if you are getting regular junk mail from a local utility provider like we always get them from local um wi-fi people um internet providers um 
just contact those people because otherwise it will just keep coming and you will keep having to deal with it and keep having to shred that information. Cut it off at the source. Just cut it out. Um, Michelle says, we're talking about paper clutter. Yes, overwhelm. Yeah, definitely. That's why you should break it down. Like do it in situ if you need to break it down into your little chunks. Um, gather in a pile, light a match, grab marshmallows, graham crackers and chocolate. <laughs> um, I kid, maybe. Yeah, in a lot of places, burning paper is not allowed. So definitely, if you are considering burning papers, um, uh, personally, my recommendation would be to shred and then recycle that shredding or, you know, reuse it. Um, a lot of people will like compost it or whatever, um, but trying to recycle or reuse it in some way rather than burning um, something that's a little better for the environment. But um, if you are, we'll say, if it's, acceptable and allowable and legal in your area and you are out burning leaves or something one day um, and you want to just throw your papers on top of it safely don't throw them all in at once or you're just going to have this big inferno but yeah um, but I would always recommend recycling um, if you can um let me see GNST mom has so I can put off letting go of my now grown kids homeschooling work it's become dear to me yeah again that's like Put that off for another day. Don't put it off indefinitely. <laughs> but it shouldn't really be part of this first go of papers because it will just slow you down. You will sit there reading through old things and you will never get anywhere. Again, trust me, learned it the hard way. <laughs> hours and hours reading through letters and notes and like old poems I wrote, old stories I wrote. Um, no. If you want to deal with papers as quickly and efficiently as possible, you need to be actually making progress really quickly. Um, Ballerina, about the user manual, she remembered me saying that last week. So when she got her new TV, she checked the manual and literally the bulk of it was in foreign languages. Yeah, you will find probably 80%, if not more, will be um, in some foreign language. Um, so tear off the important info to shred and recycle the rest. Yeah. Um, Shell has a local shredding company that shreds paper in bulk. Yes, yeah, Staples do it here in the US um, and you're able to watch them shred. Yeah, I think Staples do the same. Um, and sometimes they do like every year or every quarter or something, they, like some crowd will do bulk shredding. And again, it's all shredded in front of you. Um, so obviously right now most place, places are closed, but um, it is an option for you um, generally. <laughs> um Marie Mul Ryan, she loves this. I find listening to advice like this so relaxing, maybe because I feel like I've done something, but I don't actually have to do it. Absolutely. Learning how to do something um, gives you that kind of little buzz that you need. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, you first have to kind of make peace with that. Um, I found this with toiletries. If you've watched my toiletries video, it's a few years old now, but I was something like a little kind of revelation that I had at the time was that when I gave myself permission to keep the thing, it was actually much easier for me to let it go. Um, it's kind of a weird, um, like ironic sort of thing. But I think when you think like, oh, I have to get rid of all this stuff, I have to get rid of it. Um, it, it like it, it triggers something in you like, no, no, like it's that attachment <laughs> thing. Um, whereas when you say to yourself, like, oh, if I want to keep this, I can. I'm giving my myself permission to keep this if I really want to. And that um, releases a lot of those, like, attachment feelings. So giving yourself permission to keep something, very often you will find after a while, once you've, you know, become more comfortable with it, you will find that it is easier to get rid of it then. Um, but a lot of the time it's that initial, like, <gasps> no, I can't get rid of that. Like, what if I need it? What if this? What if that? Just giving yourself permission sometimes to keep something um, can really help. But yeah, learning how to do something, sometimes you're just not in that headspace where you can actually tackle it. But by having the knowledge, it means that when you do get the motivation to tackle it, although don't be waiting around for the motivation either, because that may never show up. Um, but having the information so that when you do tackle it, you're ready to go. You don't have to go looking for information or looking for the best. And setting those reminders. I do a weekly reset every week. And part of that is going through my paper inbox. You could do it monthly, depending on how much paperwork you have. But setting a reminder, literally on your phone, 
you can set like a monthly reminder or a weekly reminder or whatever um, and it will beep and just let you know you have to tackle whatever um, that really really helps me um, again like you just snap a picture save it on your phone then you always have it but you don't necessarily have to keep the paper thing again like I talked about digital decluttering last time, don't just let things like that build up either. But if there's something that you really do want to keep, but you don't necessarily want the big bulky magazine or stack of papers or whatever. Um, Jacqueline, progress towards perfection. That's my new mantra. Yeah, every time I mention that, um, it seems like a lot of people kind of really pick up on it. Um, and it, it has proved helpful to a lot of people. So I'm delighted because it's definitely been helpful for me. Um, so far, I keep my paper out on the table. I'd like them out of sight, but I still haven't managed to keep up with a, to me, functional system. Yeah, again, those reminders may be exactly what you need. Setting a reminder on your phone or having like a, you know, a standing appointment with yourself that every Monday morning or every Friday morning or whatever, every Sunday afternoon, that is when you sit down and tackle papers. Um, that can be really, really helpful. And again, you don't have to tackle them all in one go, but tackling 10 pieces of paper or setting a timer for 10 minutes and just going through papers. Um, and that will really, really help as well. Uh, Kathleen has spent the last week going through and discarding business paperwork. <laughs> yeah, listen, you're gonna feel so good when that is done. So good. Um, if you do have a big pile of papers and you are afraid that you won't be able to see the visual progress, like if you are a very visual person, snap a before picture. I always recommend this with all decluttering. Take a before picture. It never feels like you're making progress when you're in the middle of something. It really, it doesn't. Because like progress can be so slow. It's like watching your kids grow. Like day to day, you can't see them getting taller because it's such, there are such tiny changes because it's too close to you. You see this thing all the time. When you're making those small changes, you can't like visualize any actual progress. So taking a picture and being able to look back, like I never feel like I have made much decluttering progress until I look back at old photos. And then I'm like, <laughs> how did I have all that stuff? Like, where did I put it? How did I store it? What was I thinking? <laughs> um, but I always recommend before pictures. I think they're really a really great, helpful tool when you get to that point where you feel like I'm I'm doing nothing. Like this is a total waste of time. I've made no progress whatsoever. Also realize that some things have to get worse before they get better. Um, Michelle, how long should we keep papers like bills, paid, etc.? It really depends on um, whether you are required to keep them. Um, so like if you need them for tax reasons or whatever, your particular country will tell you how long you need to keep them. Um, in Ireland, it's seven years. Um, not 100% sure what it is here in the States. Is it like four, six years? Um, so if you need them for tax or legal reasons, I would keep them um, for whatever that period of time is. If it is a statement that you can easily access online, like a bank statement or something, switch everything over to e-statements. Um, that's another great thing with like stemming the flow that I talked about earlier. Switch to e-statements for as many possible things as you can. Um, but if it is something like bank statements, you can always access bank statements. I know every time I say this, someone comes up with some horrible story where they dumped all of their bank statements and then needed them all for something. Um, I'm like, just go to the bank. <laughs> like the bank is the banks are required to keep all of that information and um, they need to keep a record of all of your transactions for legal reasons so um once you have gone through them and you have you know balanced them all or whatever and you've checked everything and made sure that everything is okay I would think you're fine to get rid of it again as long as you don't need it for legal reasons like immediate legal reasons not just like I might potentially need this for legal proceedings one day if something were to happen. Bills, um, all mine are e-statements, so I don't um, keep them at all. <laughs> they're just emails to me. Um, they're not even emailed. I just like log in, view the account, um, and it's all set up through direct debit, so they don't need to send me a bill. The money just comes out of my account every month. Um, but a bill, again, assuming that you're not keeping it for legal reasons, I would keep it just until you are sure that the payment has gone through 
I check your bank statement or whatever. Um, sometimes I would keep it until the next bill comes in that says, um, usually when you get the next bill, it will say, you know, it will confirm that a previous payment was made. Um, and I would think at that stage, you're probably fine to let it go. Um, but yeah, like get rid of it. There's, there is nothing that you cannot contact a company about generally if it's like a utility bill or something or a bank statement and ask them to give you a copy. I never kept bills. And then I was in a situation where I needed, um, I think it was when I was getting my mortgage. I needed like the last, I don't know, six months or something of bills, um, just the amounts and stuff. And all I had to do was call up the company and say, hey, can you send me a copy of these? Or can you give me like the amounts um, or whatever? It was a really quick process. Um, yeah, the stuff like that is very rarely irretrievable. Uh, Ballerina, I snapped a picture the very first time I tackled my papers, a decade of not throwing out anything, including three college courses. I've kept college notes as well, yeah. Um, I did eventually get rid of them, but I understand what that's like. It's amazing to know I got through it all. It was a mammoth task. Papers is one of those that is tough. If you're doing the Conmary method, it's probably the first really tough category you're going to come across. But the sense of achievement at the end of it and the actual difference it makes to your daily life the things that you can do that will make a like permanent change to your life, like unsubscribing from all the junk mail and stuff. Like those are things that going forward are actually going to save you time, even if it's just like a minute. Um, but it, that's all going to add up. Like every day, if you were saving yourself a few seconds, um, that's definitely worth that. But paper clutter is one of those things that once you do it, the sense of satisfaction is... Um, yeah, it's very good. <laughs> it's very good. Have a little reward for yourself at the end of it. Um, Valerie has a shredder within five steps of her front door. Yeah, get rid of it. Don't let it come into your home. Uh, Melly Honeybee, for important papers, I have an inbox. And on one particular day in the week, I dedicate like two or five minutes to sort them where they belong. Yeah, having that standing appointment with yourself to get rid of them. Um, let me see. Kathleen, junk mail goes from the curbside mailbox straight to the recycle can in the drive. If it comes inside, it meets with like and they multiply. Yes. As soon as they infiltrate your home, that's it. <laughs> They're everywhere. Um, they will spread out. They will fan out. They will take over your entire home. So it's, yeah, not letting them get into your home in the first place really makes a difference. Um, Steve Davies, all my paper heads to the wood burner, especially with personal information on it. Yeah, getting rid of it ASAP in whatever way is convenient legal um in your area jenny says i have some baskets to sort papers not only bills medical etc but also one for me and one for hubby to sort independently yeah get other people involved like you don't have to take on the whole household's worth of papers if there is someone else there who can also do it like i leave my husband's mail for him to sort out himself um so. He's a grown man. He can take it. <laughs> Don't like, you know, feel that the burden is on you to do everything if there are other people in the house who can help. Um, Kathleen says that for tax purposes, she had to retain seven years of monthly logbooks, each page with a name and social security number. And once a year, she takes a year's worth to a commercial shredder along with invoices and bills. Yeah, for my taxes, what I do is keep them all in individual folders. So an entire year's worth in a folder. And then I know that at the end of the seven years, like once I have ticked over into the eighth year, I can just take out all of that stuff and shred it all in one go. Um, so four things that need to be kept in terms of like years or months or whatever, um, dividing them out, out into separate folders or envelopes or something. So that is. Valerie, I shred every day during commercials of a show I'm watching. That's a really good idea, yeah. <laughs> that way the shredder gets a rest of 10 to 15 minutes in between uses and I oil the shredder when I fill up the bag in the shredder. Do you oil your shredder? Is, do people do that? I've never done that. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Um, that makes sense to me though. Um, Embrace wants to know if anyone in the UK knows where you can put many boxes of photos that we don't want to put on a skip but can't go in paper recycling. We have to clear my mother's house from when my parents ran a studio. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, why can't they go in the paper recycling? Hmm. Is that just because of the like glossy printed nature? Or because I know in Ireland, we just threw everything in. Um, but yeah, if I would imagine if you ring up your local council or your local recycling center, um, they will be able to give you very specific information on that. Um, 
Bonnie, when you said set it aside, you looked straight into the camera. I felt like you were talking to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you're going through things, like if it is sentimental or you're not sure what to do with it, <laughs> put it aside. Um, keeping tax papers for five to seven years recommended is my downfall too much. Yeah, again, if you um, put them into a folder and they're all contained in their own little space, that definitely helps. Um, it is, it's crap, isn't it? <laughs> Try and scan as much as you can. Oh, and then Ka Kathleen says, multiply that by three businesses. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that is a lot. Um, let me see. Shirley, hello, I have paperwork from over 13 years from doing my nursing course at the marks I received in the UK. I want to get rid of it, but worried for some reason I might need it. I need help to decide. What could you possibly ever need it for? Um, I mean, and I, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't say that in a, like, get rid of it sort of way. I'm, I'm genuinely asking, like, can you think of a genuine reason why you would need that? Um, it's like with me, like when we did, when I did my exams in Ireland, like I kept all of my certificates and stuff, like all my exam result papers. And then one day I realized nobody is ever going to ask to see my exam results. <laughs> Um, once you get out into the world and you're working, I would assume that because you've done a nursing course that you're working as a nurse or working somewhere in the healthcare field, or maybe you were doing that and you've moved on to something else. I don't think anyone is going to ask to see um, the marks that you got in your nursing course. If you have actual work experience, um, people are going to ask you what jobs you have done. Um, so, yeah. If you're like fresh out of school and you've never had a job and that's kind of the only qualification that you have, um, then certainly keep them. But I think once you start working and you have work experience, nobody thereafter asks you what marks you got. Um, you can certainly snap a picture of them. Um, if you feel better keeping them, like if it's a great sense of pride for you, if you genuinely would fret, like genuinely you would be worried then keep them if they're only like taking up this much space. But I think just be honest with yourself about who is ever going to require that information. Um, yeah, but I know I've been, like I said, I, I kept my exam results for a long time too. Um, let me see. I'm nearly done now. I'm nearly done. <laughs> I've tried to get through as many as I can, but I hope this was really helpful because um, I know paper is a big, like it's one of the most common questions I get when it comes to decluttering. Um, do, do, do. Uh, Marula, I have, I have her pulling manuals apart. <laughs> um, Donna, government says we can now scan our tax paperwork. I scan my stuff and keep the big stuff for a few years and then shred and keep the multiple copies of the scanned items. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm just not a scanner person. I, and my tax records and stuff are not at a scale yet where I would need to scan stuff like because the bulk is not that big um but it's definitely if you can do it and get rid of the original copies um as long as you don't require the original copy you just need a copy then yeah um Malachite Moondance the near ending supply of paper that gets sent to me yeah I think we all know that especially since I moved here to the US like I had never experienced anything like this until I moved here um and then it's just never ending but I stay on top of it like as soon as I collect the mail anything that's junk straight in the recycling I don't even open it like I know as soon as it says like you've been approved or zero percent interest rate or if it says like to the resident or to the owner or to the occupier of this I'm like nope that's not for me <laughs> I go straight in the bin um no um so Dan, thank you for all this good ideas great um I'm really happy that's helpful um, but oiling the shredder, does anyone else do that? Um, Michelle says she oils her shredder. There are special sheets of paper with the oil in them. It really does help. Interesting. I'm learning. I'm learning so much. Um, I hope you are too. <laughs> um, Kathleen doesn't help the company sell names and addresses either. Yeah, that's like data protection does not exist over here in the US. If that happened in Ireland, you could easily sue a company. Like a company would not do that 
to you. <laughs> um, I got an email once, um, like a newsletter, an email newsletter from an Irish company. And I immediately wrote back and I gave them both barrels. I was like, I want to know right now where you got my information from. And if you don't reply within X amount of time or I don't get like a satisfactory response, I'm reporting you to the data protection commissioner. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I went in on them. I was like, it was not in Ireland. It was not acceptable at all. Um, so over here, you know, like as soon as you buy anything, you buy a house, you buy a car, your information is just out there. I find that <laughs> it's just like incomprehensible. Um, so yeah, that's hard. As soon as my husband buys anything, um, like don't give your information out. I mean, I go to stores over here and they're like, oh, what's your zip code or what's your email address? I'm like, I'm not giving you that information. Why would I? <laughs> I'm just buying something. Like, give me the thing. Here's the cash for it. Give me my receipt. That's it. We're done here. And um, the accent helps because I can just say like, oh, I'm not from around here. But yeah, have you ever gone to buy something here in the States and they will ask you for your phone number or your email address or your zip code? I'm, I'm just like, no, nope. You're not having that. I just say like, oh yeah, I'm not from here. I'm just, I'm just here on on holiday, just visiting. <laughs> if I don't want to get into a big conversation about it, but sometimes I will ask them. I'm like, why do you need that information? Like, why are you asking me that? In a polite way, of course. I'm just like, oh, why do you need that? And they're like, oh, it's for this, that, and the other. I'm like, no, thanks. I don't. <laughs> um. So yeah, just refuse to give people your details. Um. Tier pubs, broad categories make so much sense. I always get caught up in trying to find the perfect categories. Yeah, stick really broad. Over time, you can definitely, you know, perfect them or put them down. And But generally, I think if you don't have that many papers, it's fine to just, like, if your folder is, like, this thick, I think that's fine. How many times do you actually go through your files looking for a piece of paper? Um, I... <laughs> So I have like reference papers, like I said, and my reference folder is quite thick. Anytime I come across something, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting idea. That's something that I want to come back to. I just pop it in there. But the amount of times I have to, um, oh, Instagram just closed on me. I don't know why that happened. Um, the amount of times that I have to just go through files looking for something, it's slim and none. Like I don't need to have them like micro managed into tiny, tiny little categories. Um, if it's only going to take me a few minutes to like flick through a category to find the paper that I want, that's fine by me. The amount of times I have to do it. Um, okay, I'm going to hop off soon. I'll just go through a handful more. Uh, Malachi, I'd get revenge on the paperwork, make them into paper bricks and burn them. I used to do that until I figured that didn't spark joy for me either. <laughs> But composting and stuff, like they're good for that. Newspapers are great for cleaning windows or glass. Um, Seneca has an art wall um, for her kids to hang their favorite art. Yeah, that's great. And then they can decide, like, if they want to put up a new one, something else has to go. Bonnie opts out of every bill and subscription she can. She gets emails instead. Same. I don't get any, like, bill or anything apart from medical stuff, um, but like utilities and stuff, all e statements. Um, Donna, the youngest, still has mail coming here three years after moving out and now he even has his own house, but I'm still getting his stuff. He says that so he can visit me, so I don't mind too much. Uh, mm, I mean, it depends what it is. <laughs> if it's all just junk mail, then... I mean, he doesn't need an excuse to come see you, though, really. He doesn't. <laughs> he just, just doesn't want to forward on all that mail. If you're here in the US, like, forwarding mail is actually a really easy process well in Ireland too I've never really um had to do it too much in Ireland but when we moved here to our new home home across the street um you just fill out a form and they will take care of everything else thereafter um Kathleen CPAs are worth their weight in gold in my opinion but you still have to retain records yourself yeah but they do all the like heavy lifting um Kathleen says that you should get them to visit by baking them a pie <laughs> that would work for me I'll come visit if you're making a pie <laughs> um Seneca says sometimes it's just a scribble but the kids get to decide what we keep and what we can toss yeah I, the kids are very particular on what's important to them um and I think it's when they're younger it's helpful to respect their boundaries 
because things that seem like trash to us or seem like a little scribble on a page, like to a child can be a really big deal. Um, so letting them get involved and letting them pick out what's important to them. Um, okay, so I think I'm gonna hop off now because I've been on for an hour. <laughs> um, thank you so much for all of your comments. I hope I got to um, all of your questions. Tyr just asked, can you talk about labels? I keep mine very, very broad as well. Um, I have a label maker, but it's just a cheap manual one of one of those like Dymo, I think it is, cost me a few dollars. Um, and I only label like the things in my filing cabinet. So I have like, um, like I said, like ID slash certs. I've got health stuff. I've got reference. Um, I have a folder particularly for Scout um, where I put in anything related to like her schoolwork or um, like immunizations and um, well, all stuff like that. Um, anything related to her goes in there. Um, but again, keep them very broad. Don't like over label things. Um, it's a personal kind of preference. I think if you're, if you're a label, all the things person go for it. Um, but generally like your categories, keep them broad. Um, and then if you need to narrow down, you can, um, but yeah, I think that's it. Um, I think I've gone through everything where to repurpose during quarantine asks Melissa. Um, when you say repurpose, what do you mean? Um, I think right now, like it's, if you're looking for like donation places and things like that, or things you can do, look at last week's live stream where I talked about like what to do um, with the decluttered stuff when you can't actually bring it to a donation center or anything. Oh my goodness, Seneca. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow, oh my goodness. Thank you so, so much. That, wow. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Um, I I truly, truly appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, wow, I'm, I'm actually tearing up a little bit. I'm so, that's incredible. Thank, thank you so, so much. Um, Tira says, animal shelters can usually always take newspapers. Yeah, um, it's also a great idea. Okay, I'm gonna go. I've been on too long. I know people doesn't like people don't watch live streams anymore. Certainly not ones that are this long. Um, but I really appreciate you for being here. Oh, Bonnie, <laughs> thank you. Uh, wow, this is overwhelming. Um, thank you, thank you so so much. Um, I honestly I cannot tell you how much that means to me. Um, a lot. It means a lot. Um, okay, I'm going. Um, Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your great questions and comments um, and your suggestions and tips. I did not know that you could oil a shredder. Um, that's news to me, but I really hope that you find this helpful and that you're um, in a better position now to tackle those papers and to get yourself into a position where paper never is an issue for you in the future. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for taking the time. It really does mean a lot to me. The entire time I'm talking, I'm like, these people just want to get back to their lives, Laura, like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. So it, it genuinely, it genuinely means a lot. Um, thank you so much. And I will speak to you all very, very soon. Bye everyone. Bye. See ya.